Ok, então, now switching to English. Uh, so, uh, today we have the pleasure to receive Professor Nadia uh, from the Federal University of Pernambuco. Ok, então, now switching uh, to English. She's going to talk about um, her, I think, her latest work. So, Nadia, thank you very much for the acceptance and feel free to start whenever you're ready, ok? Thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Pedro. Um, I've prepared the presentation in Portuguese. I forgot about it. So I, I want to apologize for it, but I will speak in English. And if it's something is not clear, because I know there is uh, someone that doesn't speak Portuguese here in the audience, you can just ask me and I can translate it, okay? But I, I hope that it will be clear from the things that I'm saying. So, I will be presenting this uh, work that it was a master project from Bento Montenegro. And we were like proposing a new system, which is this harmonic oscillator, oscillator kicked. When I'm, I'm looking to another degree of freedom, like I have the harmonic oscillator, but I have also this uh, spin and I will be kicking this spin and I will be kind of producing this uh, Floquet system, okay? So I will explain all these things, but just to give an introduction. Um, and as I said, this was uh, a work that was published this year. And usually I just talk about non-Markovian stuff, open quantum system stuff. But since I just gave a talk in this uh, SBF, um, quantum information, quantum optics and quantum information uh, web webinars, and Lucas is organizing these webinars. I said, no, I, I don't want to present the same thing. It's just boring. So I decided to present this work. But I have to confess, this is not really my, like the, the, the area that I'm, that, that I'm doing most of my work. So I'm not really an expert about the things that I'm presenting. But I think it's, a, it's cute, the, 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 the system that we are proposing. So I wanted to tell a little bit about it. But if I say something that you don't understand or you want to, to add something, like feel free to, to help me in this presentation, okay? Because it's the first time I'm presenting it and um, I know that I'm enough expert in flow case systems and things like that. But anyway, so uh, what is the idea here? So I have some, some um, a Hamiltonian that is a very simple Hamiltonian. Here I have an example, just a, a uh, harmonic oscillator, okay? And what I will do, I will introduce some other um, term, which is this kicked harmonic oscillator. So in, in periodic times, I will be kicking this harmonic, um, this, this uh, here's just an example, okay? I spring and in some mass, and I will be kicking this mass. I can also think about a pendulum, and I will be kicking this pendulum in some points of the time. And what I can say is that depending on this, the frequency that I'm giving these kicks and the fundamental frequency of this harmonic oscillator, I can then see different dynamics going from something that we call regular to something that we call chaotic, okay? So we can just, with a system, these kicked systems, we see that we can uh, reproduce chaotic dynamics. Well, <clears throat> Then um, in quantum mechanics, we call this uh, Hamiltonians that they are periodic in time as this Floquet system, okay? For classical physics, I know that they, the Floquet system, they have to um, satisfy some other conditions, but here, since everything is linear, I think we don't have to talk about linearity and we just define the, I, I will assume when I'm talking about Floquet systems is that the Hamiltonian is periodic in time. So this is just us saying, okay, one possibility is just, I have my the, the, like the harmonic oscillator as I, I told you before, and I introduce some, uh, some part that's periodic in time, okay? This is just some, some example. And this type of focus systems, they, they got a lot of attention in the last years, I would say in the last 10 years. So I, here I'm just giving some examples. So we have this new journal of physics where they see, they are looking for this Floquet system in many body systems. And they, they, they show that depending how you do this Floquet system, you can see some um, uh, 
like a crystalline phase. How do you say it in English? But you can see this, 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 um, these structures in the space phase. And this is very interesting because here they don't have like, um, it's not a, a, a matter, it's not so, a solid. They're just creating this, these crystals because of this kicked Hamiltonian, because of this locate system. I think it's very surprising. It's, it's very nice, this result. And also they can do this, um, here is another example where they, they even can see these band structures that they will appear because of this focus system, okay? Um, we can have also this also different uh, example how these focus systems, they are um, used. Here we have some uh, easing model where they can see phase transitions. And one way to, to see it, I'm just giving this an example, is just if you look to the magnetization, the magnetization in one direction will go to infinity, so it diverge, and this is a sign of this uh, phase transition. This is very typical for uh, phase transitions. And just uh, I'm just going very quickly, just to give you like a little bit of the taste that this four phase systems that they are very they are they have been used nowadays, like in this uh, applied to this uh, solid state uh, physics. Here is another, they can also, there I was looking to um, the space phase, not position and momentum, but I can also create, looking for focus systems, I can create these prime uh, crystals. So they can see that there is, there is this recurrence of probability. So it goes to zero, then it goes up again, and they, they can create this kind of uh, different kind of crystals because they are, they are looking to time and not position. And just to make some advertisement, this is a paper of a group here in, uh, in our department where they see then uh, evidence of locate phase in a photonic system. So they are looking to locate systems in photonic systems. Okay. So then we will be, we want to connect what we were doing with this locate systems or with Hamiltonians that they are periodic in time where I have these kicks. And this is important, as I said, we, we can connect this to chaos. So just thinking about how chaos um, is defined. If I have a classical system, you know, we know that if I start with the two very similar initial conditions and I have a dynamics and this dynamics is chaotic, if this, uh, the trajectories, they will just separate uh, fast in time. So I start very similar, but then shh, they separate very fast. And one way to, to um, count or to see this is just look, going to this uh, Lyapunov exponent, exponents, exponents, and then I can see how fast, how is this rate of separation. And then I could expect, okay, how can I define chaos in, in a quantum system? So just to start with two initial, very similar initial conditions is not the answer because we know, well, we just, if it's a, uh, closed system, they, it, it will just evolve uh, with a unitary. And then the norm will just stay the same. And then it just, the trajectory, they will be if it's very close, they will just remain very close. So this is, an, this is not a solution. It doesn't depend how is this dynamics here. It will just, you will see just the same thing. And because this could be um, an expectation, know that I have a classical, um, dynamics that I know is chaotic here. And then I will just do this canonical quantization and then I will change it for some Hamiltonian that's now an, an operator. And I would just expect, okay, let's see if I start to move to very similar states, if they just, but it, it, it won't work. So one way to see it, the, the quantization, as I said, it's, it's a way. I, I know, I look to a dynamics that classically, I know that I, I can see chaos. And then now, now I try to find a way, how can I notice or how can I identify this chaotic uh, characteristic of these dynamics when I quantize these dynamics somehow? And then what I do is I will just change a little bit the Hamiltonian, and then I will look to this quantity, which is just the, like the state with the Hamiltonian uh, changed and the state with just the original Hamiltonian. And then I will uh, calculate this uh, product and I will define this as the Loschmidt echo. Okay, this is a quantity that they call Loschmidt echo. 
and this appeared as, as, as far as I know, okay, <laughs> that's, that's the first time in this Asher Perry's paper. And what he did is that he looked to uh, a chaotic dynamics that he knew, okay, he knew exactly the, the regimes where it was regular and where it was chaotic. And then he quantized uh, these dynamics. And what he saw is when he calculated this Lushing echo, is that, okay, both of them, they just um, decay exponentially, but then the, for the regular dynamics, it will go like up again and in time, but for the chaotic dynamics, it will just remain uh, close to zero, okay? Here, maybe here is just more like, you can see that it oscillates, but it stays very close to zero. And then in the regular dynamics, it will just go up, it oscillates, like it will go up again. So we know that this is, if we go to the Loschmidt echo and you see a behavior like this, you have a chaotic dynamics, okay? And just to exemplify, okay, just to make it uh, more clear that here I just have a similar dynamics and I have here like a very uh, exponential decay if I go to the logarithmic um, scale. And then after this, this exponential decay, I see that it oscillates very close to zero. Note here that I just remain, I like the, the initial conditions are just the same, okay? I just have the same size zero. I'm just changing, making like a, a, a small change in the Hamiltonian. Well, so we, we like, we started this work, we were not thinking about this local systems. Maybe I can, since we are in a small group, I can tell you the truth. <laughs> when we started this, uh, the question that Parisio came to me was, well, maybe we can see thermalization if we just have like a harmonic oscillator interacting with spin and we are measuring this spin, it, um, somehow we are introducing like some, um, kind of a random uh, stochastic behavior because we are measuring the spin. And then he was asking me, do you know if it's possible like we see thermalization in a system like this? And then we started these calculations and we realized that, that the average energy was just increasing. And then we thought, wow, okay, it would be hard to show that it's thermalized because the energy is just increasing. And then we realized, okay, this is not a good model for the things, this, this first question. But then we, do, we saw this connection with these Cloquet systems. And then we saw the connection with many things, with these crystal structures, I, I will show you. But just to, to motivate how we came with this idea, it was more like we are trying to find a way to introduce some stochastic behavior with measures, okay? But at the end, we, we end up thinking about chaos and all these things, but okay. So we need three ingredients here in our uh, proposal. The first one, as I said, I need some harmonic oscillator, okay? And I will then prepare this, uh, my system in a coherent state. And we have chosen to do this, okay? We, we, then we have my, my Hamiltonian is the Hamiltonian of harmonic oscillator. And then I'm preparing my system in a coherent state. So we know that in this dynamics, the coherent state will just remain like it will oscillate, goes in one direction, but the, the shape, the Gaussian shape of this package will just remain um, constant, okay? So just be like the, the variance is not changing, everything is like, it's just changing the position, but it's not changing the, the shape. Good. Then we wanted to make this, like, as I said, we wanted to measure, um, we wanted to introduce some, some stochastic uh, characteristic with the measurement. But we didn't want to, like, if we just wanted to measure the, 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 the coherent state, we would be just fixing it in some position. And that's not what, like, we, want, we didn't want to just make something so um, strong. We wanted somehow, to make a little change, the, the like, it, I, we want it to be like stochastic. There is a problem that it remains the same, or there is a problem that something changed. And 
That's why we're introducing, and we introduced another degree of freedom, which, which in this case we, we have chosen to introduce uh, the spin. So imagine then we are talking about some ion or some atom, and I'm talking about the orbital uh, degrees of freedom and the spin degrees of freedom. Okay, I'm just separating these things. And we wanted to entangle uh, these two degrees of freedom. That's why we put some magnetic field. So the, what, at the end, we have written a magnetic field that's depending on the position. So here I'm just looking to the magnetic field in one direction. Um, and what is happening then is that my Hamiltonian now changes and it's written like this. So the spin is seen, is interacting with the magnetic field. And since the magnetic field is depending on the position, I can see as the spin changes with the position, okay? So now with this, this I have added uh, interact, uh, a part of the Hamiltonian that is like responsible for the interaction between the spin and the, 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 the other uh, degrees of freedom, the orbital degrees of freedom, okay? Just one comment. Um, well, we I have written like the magnetic field is just X uh, in the direction of Z. But be careful, like I'm just thinking about, I'm defining this, this guy here, okay? I'm, I still have the uh, divergent uh, of the magnetic field equals to zero. So I'm satisfying the Maxwell equations. It's just that from this picture is not so clear, but okay. Just think that in this plane where I have Y and Z uh, zero, I have this magnetic field that I'm talking about, okay? So, <clears throat> Then I have almost all the ingredients that I need. I, I have this harmonic oscillator and I have this other part of the interaction, which I will convince you that is working as a Floquet system. And if I introduce all the elements, okay? But I will need also to measure that, as I said, we wanted to see how the measurement is changing these dynamics or is introducing some um, stochastic behavior. And so I can think that I have prepared my spin in the eigenstate of the SX, uh, so in the X direction, the, the Pauli uh, matrix in the X direction, because at the end here, it's just because of the way that I have chosen the directions, okay? Since I have chosen the magnetic field in the Z direction, uh, it was like trivial if I have just chosen the spin in the same direction. So I wanted to see, like, I didn't want the, the, the guy to be the eigenvector of this operator. So that's why I have chosen the X direction. It could be a Y, it could be any other direction, okay? So then what I see is that if I start with my state um, in this superposition here, I'm just separating uh, the plus and the minus part. So when I'm not writing the, I'm not specifying like here X, they are the eigenstates of the sigma Z, okay? So what I see is that the coherent state that is like this, this guy here that is going with the plus, it will see this harmonic oscillator as some, some uh, potential that is um, displaced in, in to, into the left. And this part here will, be, will see something that is displaced into the right. So what I'm talking is, Nadia. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, sure. So in this case, the kick is the magnetic field. Mm -mm. No. Is the you can think that the kick is the interaction and the measurement. So it oh, will okay, be okay. The, to appear the kick, I need the measurement because if I just have the magnetic field, what will appear is that I will have two coherent states oscillating. So nothing new, nothing okay. really new. So for the kick, I really need the measurements, okay? Yeah. So I will get there. I still don't have measurements here. <laughs> so oh, I just, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, here, just to, to, to make it clear that because I have this uh, superposition here, I can see the evolution of the coherent state as two different evolutions. If I'm just thinking about, as I said, the Mahamutonian is this thing here. So if I have this part applied to this, it, it could be 
it could be written as a unitary uh, applied to the coherent state, which has this form here. Okay. And if this is the minus, it has a similar form where there will like a different sign will appear here. So as I said, it will appear two new coherent states that they will start to evolve there. So I'm just introducing some notation, but I don't want really to go into the details, but it's just, I will call this a new coherent state, okay? Which has this um, size. So I can, after one interaction, and this interaction, I'm assuming that it takes a time, this big T, okay? I'm just fixing the time of the interaction. So this first interaction is just takes a time, big T. And then going back to the basis of the sigma X. So I see that together with the spin in the X di, uh, plus uh, X direction, I have this superposition. If I have the minus, I have this, uh, like uh, I just have a difference of phase here, okay? So here plus or minus. And V is just something that's related uh, to the intensity of this uh, uh, spin orbital correlation. So alpha, this guy here, which is giving the strength of the interaction. Nice. So it can, as I said, if I measure here, what I see, if I'm measuring the X basis, so I will just, end up with this superposition or this superposition. And if I don't do anything, that will be just there going up and forth. So how can I construct now this, or how can I show you that I'm constructing like this um, Dirac spot tooth? I don't know the name English exactly, but it, it, like this, this part of the Hamiltonian that was giving us the kicks. So I don't have this. What I will show you is that with this measurement, this is stroboscopic measurements, I'm doing something similar that I was doing at the beginning uh, when I was introducing the uh, harmonic oscillator. So now what I will do is that I evolve in a time big T, then I measure, then I evolve again, big T measure, and I will do a sequence of measurements, uh, like evolution measurements, evolution measurements. Okay, so I need this these measurements to to have the kids. So then, in the first uh, evolution, as I said, I have this state here, and either I will measure the spin in minus or I will measure in plus. And as I said, I will end up with this superposition of two coherent states. So if I go to the phase space. I will have here, okay, I started with this coherent state, and then I have two possibilities. In both of the results, plus or minus, I will always have two possibilities. If I do it again, now it will evolve again, which means that this guy will become two, and this will also become two. So I now have four coherent states. So this, as I said, I measured, so I don't have this guy anymore. I just have the two, uh, the superposition here and they have evolved already. So I can do it many, many times. And we were doing this like n times. And at the beginning, when we started this calculation, we wanted to do it, do it calculating it like uh, numerically using quantum trajectories. So when Parisu came to me, I said, no, this is very easy to do using quantum trajectories. But as I, we saw the uh, average energy just increasing, we thought, well, maybe we are doing something wrong. Maybe, how can we just um, verify that our program is doing the, the, the right thing? And then Bent, we started to calculate. We said, okay, let's do like this. Just um, one interaction and one measure. And it's very easy to calculate. Then he calculated the, the final state. And I said, okay, let's just check the like two, uh, one interaction measure, one interaction measurement again. And then he calculated. So he was calculating so many things, like so many steps, that at the end he could just find an analytical solution for it. If we were like, we didn't, he didn't have to do it in like numerically. He was just able to calculate it analytically. So that's why we have this close uh, solutions here. How is the state, how this, the, the coherent state is evolving after N measurements, which means like N is just a, a package of, Evolving, measuring, evolving, measuring, okay? 
And as I said, okay, the, here, I just started with a state and then I go after one, uh, like a vo evolution in one measurement, I will have two and then I have uh, four. And at the end here, if n is equal to three, I have like eight possibility. So I have a, a superposition of eight coherent states. And what will I, and I have two n possibilities because that, remember that I had a phase here, which was different. The zeta plus and zeta minus, they were different like, um, okay, this was different, but I have like here a phase. So if all these superpositions, they will change it to their, their appear like phases and they depend how is this measurement, the results. If it's plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, this, this, this would determine these phases, okay? So here is then the, the, the possibilities, which is like the results of the measurements. And then for each, uh, I will call trajectory, for each trajectory, I have a different uh, coherent state. Or, yeah. So I think here it's more clear. So I have these different, uh, like I have two to the n, the different possibilities of results. And for each of these possibilities, I will end up with some state, which is just a superposition of uh, coherent states. And here's just the result uh, of like what Not is here. the speed part. Yeah. Right. Um, did you guys take into account the, the noise introduced by the measurement? Mm -hmm. Perfect measurement. What, what, what do you mean? Oh, I, I, I mean that every time you do a, a measurement in a quantum system, you introduce some noise. No, I'm just, yeah. as I said, I, like if I have this the sequence of measurement, I will have a pure state at the end. And projecting it, it's just a phenomenal measurement. Like I'm projecting it to the, the state, pure state. Okay, so in, in, um, and each measurement is, I mean, the measurements are equally spaced in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like the I'm not I'm not counting on the time of the measurement. Okay, usually we don't say this. No? I'm just saying it evolves at time big T, and then I measure projecting to the state. Then I evolve this state, I time big T, measure again, evolve, measure. Okay, okay. Okay. It's just a, like, um, it's a projective measurement. No, I'm just looking to this, I'm just looking to these pins and I'm projecting this coherent states in this superposition. Well, then just fixing one trajectory here, I, I, we were like looking to different trajectories and how the energy is changing. Mm. My time is like, the total time is big N time T, this big T, okay? So it's, it's similar to these collisional models that I have, uh, the time of the collision is delta T and I have this, the, the numbers of the collision will give me the total time. So that's why we said this is stroboscopic measurements because I have like, quant somehow like I have the, divided the time in, in parts of T, okay? So just to show how this behavior can change completely from one trajectory to the other. Here I have an example where I measured minus plus, plus, blah, 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 and here I have some, some other possibility. And here the energy is just decreasing and here the energy is just increasing. So I have very different uh, scenarios. Most of the times the energy is increasing. You, I, we will see that if I just calculate the um, expected value of the energy in the ensemble, we'll see that the, the energy is uh, increasing. But as I said, okay, there are trajectories, there are possibilities here where I will see the energy decreasing, okay? And this, uh, the separation between uh, these two guys, it happens more or less uh, close to five. So we, we decided to plot um, then fixing in five, something like five or six, I, I, I'm not uh, totally sure, but exactly close to that point where they get different. What is the Husimi function in the phase space? Okay. Why we calculated the Husimi? Because it was the easiest thing to calculate. There is nothing <laughs> like, a, 
big thoughts about it. We just thought, well, from this quasi-probability uh, functions, this was the easiest to calculate because we had already the state, and then we just have to project it in the Cohen state set. So here, what we see is that they are completely different. This one, this, this trajectory from this one, if you just look to the phase space. And as I said, I just have started with like um, the same initial condition, but the only thing that is different is the results that I'm, I'm observing in the measurements, okay? Even the dynamics is like the, the, the evolution is equal, but since I have these measurements, the, the, they will give me different results. Uh, they, they are, you can observe completely different dynamics. So then that, that's the point where we started to think, well, this is like, it seems that I have something that is kind of uh, erratic, no? like similar to, to chaos, because I'm starting with some initial conditions and I'm just um, observing some like very different behaviors. And then we, we started to ask ourselves, well, maybe we can quantify uh, chaos somehow in this uh, system. But then the problem is, um, if I go back to the Loschmidt echo, we, the definition, we see that here I don't account for measurements. I just have an evolution with H or H bar. And I don't like the, the, the change Hamiltonian, but I don't have measurements here. So we wanted to, to think how can we introduce um, measurements in a way that the, the definition of the Loschmidt echo makes sense, okay? And the way we did it, because if we just calculated the Loschmidt echo looking to very different trajectories, these very different trajectories will just like be responsible for the Loschmidt echo to, um, to, 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 to get like to oscillate. So what we wanted is we didn't want to, to like the, the measurement, the thing that I have different trajectories, they are just so different that the Loschmidt echo is going, uh, is oscillating because of this difference. So I'll, what we decided to compare is like similar sequences, similar trajectories, okay? And make a small change in the Hamiltonian. So then when I'm calculating the Loschmidt echo, see here that I have the same K, which means that I have the same um, uh, sequence of measurements, but in one part, I will just look into the Hamiltonian, the original Hamiltonian H, and in the other, I will change the Hamiltonian in a way like I had the harmonic oscillator. I'm just increasing a little bit the fundamental frequency by this delta uh, omega zero. Okay, this is how I change the Hamiltonian. And then I'm calculating this Loschmidt echo for like one specific uh, trajectory, one specific uh, sequence of measurements. One thing that I have just, it's just a technical uh, thing is that since I'm changing the fundamental energy a little bit, I want I had to change this, uh, this parameter B. So at the end, I'm, I'm changing the mass because I wanted the initial conditions to be the same. So the initial condition for the Hamiltonian, the original Hamiltonian, and the initial condition for the change Hamiltonian to be the same. So that is kind of artificial, but that was just to, to uh, contemplate this, okay? And as I said at the beginning, it makes a big difference. Uh, how is this the frequency of the kicks? How the frequency of the kicks is they are related to the fundamental uh, frequency? I, I will change from one behavior from a regular behavior to a chaotic behavior. And this is also like here, okay, I will get there, but here I'm just then calculating this Loschmidt echo for one trajectory. And as I said, we could see this uh, chaotic, uh, the sign of uh, an evidence of a chaotic behavior, because I have, we have this exponential decay, and then it remains very close to zero. This was for just two options of how we change this, uh, the original Hamiltonian, this uh, delta omega zero, okay? And why do I have uh, two pictures? Because here, the, the thing that is changing is just, the relation between the fundamental energy and this the, the time of the kicks, which is related to the time of the evolution, this big T, okay? 
<laughs> because we saw, I will show you that we, if we just look to the power of the energy, we saw that there is a regime when I, for some parameters for the fundamental frequency and the frequency of the measurements of the kicks, I saw that there is a, like an ideal uh, number where the, 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 the exchange of energy is bigger. So we call this resonance, okay? So this is the regime where I have I'm this resonance, which means that the R, the, the omega zero divided by the omega is just ideal. So we see that even the chaotic behavior is stronger here. So it gets faster to zero and to many zero. So since uh, we had- no, no. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt you again. <laughs> no problem. Um, okay. I can see the Lushmi echo decaying exponentially fast, but how many, how can I make sure that this is actually K? Because always when the Loschmidt echo is decaying, it stays zero, it chaos. Therefore, the regularity will oscillate. But I, I, as far as I know, this is true. Oh, it's it's regular. Okay, I, I, I understand. But, but there are systems that the Loschmidt echo just decay, mm. and they are not chaotic. Actually, um, like, like, like I wanted to show it in the in the first in the first uh, um, um, in one of the first slides about dynamical quantum phase transition. What you have is that the Lushnikov oscillates, but it decays exponentially with time. So it goes to yeah, but here we don't but have oscillation. No, I see. I see that you don't have oscillation, but it always decays. Or I know the decay is true. It always decay, which is it like more important is this part here. The decay is true. The regular also decay. Decays. The thing is here, like okay, I had a zoom that I'm not showing here, but you can really see that it's very close. This changing like ten to minus I don't know four. It's very close to zero. No. Okay. 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 Let, let me think a little bit more. Okay. Nadia, oh. so uh, in this case, uh, you mentioned the resonance, right? Uh, I, so I will explain it, what, what I mean, but okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I will get there, yeah. <laughs> okay, because I, I need to go to the ensemble. I, I need to think about all the possibilities, okay? So as I, I showed you, Lucas, we can still discuss this, okay? We just go and we can go back if you want later. Yeah, we okay. were able to we were able to find here the states for one um, one measurement or for one track what I'm calling trajectory because I think about quantum trajectories, but it's like a sequence of measurements, okay? So what we as I, I was able to calculate the state or Bent was able to calculate the state, then he was just looking to the average, to the ensemble. And at the end, what he saw is that many terms, they will cancel. Because do you know, remember that the, the difference was just a phase, which was a sign minus or plus. So there are many components that they will cancel. In. And at the end, he saw that the density operator could be written like this, which is kind of, um, it wasn't expected. I found it, but it's nice because like each uh, coherent state is appearing, it's kind of a microcanonical uh, ensemble because they are appearing with uh, equal probability, okay? And then we were able to calculate the, the expected value for the energy. And uh, we, what we saw is that this, this value was, is always increasing. Yes, yeah? so see, I, I just have positive values here and they are going with N. And this is kind of uh, like similar to what we just found this uh, thesis where they are looking to chaos in a delta kicked harmonic oscillator. And they also show that the energy is just increasing with time. So, okay, we thought nice because we have similar result. If we had different results, we have to understand why this, but it's just like I'm giving kicks, I'm introducing energy in the system, okay? And talking about the power, so since I have the, the expected value for the energy, I can calculate, define 
uh, average power. And what we saw is that there is, as I said, there is uh, some uh, choice of the fundamental energy, uh, the fundamental frequency and the frequency of the kicks. The kicks will be the measurements, okay? And there is a point where this, this power is maximum, and this is what we are calling resonance, okay? So that, that graph uh, from the right was uh, plotted with these parameters here, which gives this uh, R, this, this relation, equals to 0.371. Uh, does this answer your question, Pete? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, I, I thought that the resonance um you know the the origin of the resonance was the relation between the magnetic field and the measurements but it's not actually no it's more saying. about the, the fundamental frequency of the harmonic oscillator it's very similar to what we had in the kicked uh, the floquet system yeah it's, the, it's related okay. to the frequency the fundamental frequency and the frequency of the kicks which here will be uh the frequency of like Interacting, measuring, interacting, measuring. So yeah, yes, okay. and the horizontal, the horizontal axis in this graph is the, is the the frequency, right? Is this relation? Oh, okay. Is okay. omega zero uh, divided by omega, and omega is one over the big T. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> we could, could also look to the expected value of X and P. And surprisingly, they, they are not depending on N. So they are not changing in time. That we would do just like omega zero is fixed. The time of the interaction is fixed, this T. This is the initial condition, initial condition. So if I just plot in, this, in the phase space, I see that this is not changing. But then we were like, well, the energy is increasing. Where the energy is going? <laughs> so if you are not changing this, this is not increasing. But then we saw that the variance is increasing. Okay, so the energy is going uh, into this uh, to change the variance of these packages. Okay, and then uh, when we were able to calculate this Loschmidt echo and we saw this, this evidence of a chaotic behavior, we thought, well, so I think we have this Floquet system. We are just simulating a Floquet system. Let's check if we can find these crystal structures if they appear. And then we were just checking for the, exactly the same regime where this paper was, this, this paper here. They choose like the uh, ratio between the fundamental frequency and the kick. It's one four. And they show that these crystal structures, they appear. And then exactly in the same uh, regime, this is like uh, for two measurements and for, uh, I have to count the number of, but it's more measurements and more measurements, okay? Just increasing the number of measurements. But you see exactly that you can see the same crystal structure if I find this uh, R equals to one four. The same thing that appears here in this, uh, this other model, they show like this, uh, these crystals uh, appearing in the phase space for the same parameters, okay? The same relation of parameters. So this was nice. This is another evidence that we have this Floquet system. Uh, we are generating a Floquet system, but note here that differently from what usually is done, that is just, I have an, a, a Hamiltonian that I will quantize this Hamiltonian. Here, the, the, the Floquet system is appearing um, completely because of these measurements. If I don't have measurements, I don't have this happening, okay? And I also can change uh, this, this, the, this uh, parameter, this relation. And then we see similar pictures more with this uh, results here, which they, they can relate it to, to band structures, okay? And we can even go to some other rational uh, relation. And then we will have similar things to what they call this geometric frustration. Like we could try to um, cover this plane with some pentagonal, but, but we know that the pentagonal will not go over, so we have these empty spaces and we have similar uh, effects appearing here, which is also known that if the frequency, this, this relation is a rational number, 
then the, you, you see frustration. So we were also able to see the same uh, effect. So then just uh, summarizing it, um, we have this system <coughs> which somehow we are like going further, like it's different from what is usually the, the kicked systems in quantum mechanics because we are introducing the, uh, like we give some special role for the measurements, okay? We have the evidence of a quantum chaotic system that's not an analog of classical system because I have the measurements, I don't have any analogy with a classical system. We were able to show these crystals, this, uh, these crystal structures in the phase space, similar to a, to a focus system. And then the question that we can still uh, like ask ourselves is that, if I, we were able to see if phase transitions, like is there an, something that we can measure that we could just signalize that we have phase transitions? I don't know. Or can we, with a similar system, create this time crystals? I don't know. So Bento is now doing a um, PhD. Maybe he will be able to answer this question. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nadia. Okay, so now we. Uh, we are open to questions. So do we have any questions, Janadio? Um, I, I, I don't have actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, because I mean, Pedro, Pedro is, is now studying uh, dynamical quantum phase transition. Pedro is in another it's another PhD student here. Um, and we are very interested in, in, in complexity and things like this, and how these things behave in, in, a, in a critical system, like you showed in the first slide. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how to connect, how to connect to the key of the system with the system that you showed in the beginning. Uh, actually, just this slide, just the, 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 the paper about dynamical quantum phase transition. Can we actually see a dynamical quantum phase transition critical city in, 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 in your picture? Yeah, okay. This is uh, something I really don't know, but what I had in mind is in the same way that they look to magnetization and they see that they have this, this uh, divergent uh, behavior, I thought maybe we could just think about some observable where we will see some, something like it's not expected, something that's diverging. This is something I had in mind, but I, I don't know if it makes sense, okay? I, but yeah. ah, okay. because okay. how do you do you usually the, like show that you have a phase transition? I, I'm well, talking I, like similar I, to here. A dynamic As, one. Uh, here. This, this, this paper. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. This, um, because, because there is a formal, a formal uh, mathematical action uh, analogy between the Loschwitz echo <clears throat> and the, the, the partition point in thermodynamics. But instead of going to the, the complex temperature point, you go to the, to the complex timing point. And then you can build this analogy, and then you can show that the, that the Loschwitz echo. Uh, from the Loschmidt echo, you can view uh, sort of partition function, which mm -hmm. is bothered by the ground stage. And then the, these partition functions uh, uh, diverge when the Loschmidt uh, echo will be zero. But okay. here we are talking about a, a closed dynamical system. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, 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 and that's why I'm, think, I'm, I'm thinking about the connection between these things because. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what the motivation, because exactly. Uh, somehow we started this work thinking, how can we simulate the effect of the environment with measurements? So that's why I said the first question was about thermalization. And then I went up with like seeing, okay, it, it won't be possible to do this. But somehow I, I agree with you. It's kind of related like... Um, uh, yeah, because, because these things are actually related. I mean, we, we are trying to understand certain connections between chaos, mm -hmm. or, or not even connections, but I mean, similarities between chaotic systems and systems that present this sort of critical behavior. 
um, and there are some there are some things that are very interesting. Actually, very recently we have a we had a paper, a mathematical paper, uh, here on archive, where they connected Lyapunov exponents with the fissure information. Ah, cool. Uh, directly, but uh, uh -huh. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a geometrical formulation. Uh -huh. um, I, I didn't understand this paper because I mean the paper just appeared. <coughs> okay. Yes. Uh, cool. Can I? No, sorry, can I participate the the conversation? Uh, so, I I think I saw some some weeks ago um, uh, a some paper in archive uh, in which they report uh, the network quantum phase transition in, in Floki like systems. But mm. you know, I, I I actually I don't know anything about uh, about it. I I didn't still have the time to to read this paper. But you know, in this case, there are some uh, some aspects that uh, bother me very much because you know the the these uh, just like the equilibrium phase transition, the dynamical quantum phase transitions are defined in the thermodynamic limits, and in this case, yeah, we yeah. have we have only one uh, spin. So so there is this fact. Maybe it would be very hard to explain what is happening in the system. Actually, there are some papers um, reporting the network quantum phase transition in Rabi model, but mm. uh, you know we have a lot of questions about uh, about these these papers. Oh, I, I don't understand the, 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 the usual phase transition. Yeah. Rabi model. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a lot yeah. of questions because you know we ha you ha in this case uh, you have only one two level atom. And an external um, uh, unique mode uh, mode um, quantum field. So uh, you know how would you have uh, a dynamical quantum phase transition in this case? But... Yeah, I do, I don't know. I really like it. this is something. It's just we thought about as an open question, but it's still I haven't like really thought about it. Yeah. But as I said, my idea like. If I just have to say something, I was thinking like trying to find something that is like diverging. Yeah, the question is very good because uh, Loschmidt echo is the, the the quantity that characterizes the dynamical quantum phase transition. So mm -hmm. this is a very good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for sure I have to learn more about it. But I agree with you. Maybe that's even not well defined in our system. Because here they yeah, have yeah. an easy model, it's just they have many degrees. Yeah, we also have many things to learn about it too. <laughs> <laughs> if you came up with some idea, we can test. Actually, yeah. it, 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 it's interesting that the, 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 the energy increasing is going to the variance. Because, uh -huh. of, I mean, um, okay, you, 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 you have a pure stage here. You have the, the, the measurement, but um, usually the pure state, um, the variance is equal to the fission information divided by four. But this is in the ensemble. But this is the ensemble. The, the average energy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I, I, I understand, I understand, this is the ensemble. But fission information is, a, is an average quantity. Mm -hmm. And people, people related these things with uh, sort of, uh, dynamical quantities like quantity speed limit or 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 even uh, 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 mm -hmm. I mean, there is a paper by Hasegawa. I think that uh, Pedro knows Pedro knows this paper where they directly related efficient uh, uh, efficient information with the and the variance with with the mm -hmm. So the yes. behavior of Guys, you can you can understand why these things increases. Ah, uh, cool, cool. So they they are related. Some somehow I can show that. If yeah, yeah, they're the they mathematical. Yeah, they're oh, mathematical. I didn't know this. Cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, think, I think that Peter can put the, the reference there in, in the chat. Yes. Yes. Great. Um, okay. And so, the variance, uh, the, the sorry, Lucas. Uh, we have a question here in the... Yes, in the oh, chat. So, oh, okay. uh, Raul is asking, did you think of calculating all talks, which are also a measure of quantum chaos? 
No, because we just started with flush with echo and then we saw that it's decreasing and then we were like, okay. And then we just were calculating this crystal structure and then we were peeing and then we were convinced. But maybe you can tell me. But but the problem, like, the problem is, is there something talk, different? Yeah, I, I think that the problem with a talk is that you have, um, you have, you don't have local operators because you just have a harmonica link. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. a talk in this case it would be trivial. I think, okay. but I, 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 maybe, I may be wrong. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Um, but I don't know if, if Bravo wants to open the microphone. Uh, I uh, just asking. Ta. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because, I, as I said, we were not really worried about calculating other things. We just calc and we when we saw that this discount kind of behavior is restricted. But that that was a question that we uh, already saw in this presentation. Uh, if we thought about some other like evidence, of thank things, you, and we didn't. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, more questions? Uh, Nadja, the, the paper uh, which Lucas was was talking about, uh, I, I just sent in the chat the link. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a paper by Hazegawa. And um, in this paper, they relate a Loschmidt echo and the variance of a arbitrary uh, Hermitian operator. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, no. Cool. And reversibility. Maybe. Okay, this interests me. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that the equation that uh, Lucas was talking about is the equation 17 at, at the end of the paper. Okay, I'll check. Nice, thanks. Okay, uh, more questions? Uh, okay, so I, I have a question. Uh, I got very curious about these uh, crystal structures in the phase space. Uh, does anyone uh, ever, uh, did anyone ever give uh, an explanation to these, uh, these crystals structures? I mean, uh, what they, what actually they, they, uh, they mean and or where they come from? They come from this periodic, uh, this kicked part that you are introducing. Like, I think it's kind of you are simulating a solid state. This is how I understand it, but I also like, it's a similar, it's not a solid because you don't have this, uh, it's not a solid, <laughs> but you are kind of simulating when you introduce this kicked part. Yeah, and, and um, I don't know that they consider the same potential that you consider, but uh, you are considered a potential, uh, you know, which may be used to describe atoms in a, in a crystal interacting to each other like phones or something else or something like this. So uh, these, uh, these um, crystal structures uh, are related to this specific potential or, or maybe... Do you know something about it? I think they are related to this Floquet systems, but I don't think that you have any other restriction. Okay. But I'm not sure. Do to know, Lucas? Um, no. Yeah, I don't. I know, I'm not sure. There are so many works. Like this was a result for 2013. So 10 years, like there are many, many examples of this. Yeah, 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 they're very interesting. I actually I never heard of it, so. Yeah, I, I also very, think it's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so no questions on YouTube. Um, so Nadja, thank you very much for the acceptance. It was very, very interesting. 
we have been thinking about dynamical quantum phase transitions and 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 uh, Lars Schmidt echo and and this and also we'll talk as as Raul mentioned in the chat so much. So actually, mm -hmm. we could we could stay uh, here all day. All day <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool because well, like when we finished this work, and then I was I was. I wasn't like working with this anymore. So now I feel like motivated to go back to this. Yeah. And we can talk again. And if you also came to some idea how we could test uh, phase transitions or things like this, we, we can talk. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice, okay. That's it. The same talk again. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry, my internet uh, just, I think it's not good. Lucas, I, I lost what you said. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ah, now okay. I can. Um, that, I, I think that there is a way. Hmm. <laughs> you see, um, irreversibility, irreversibility can, be, can be measured by the relative entropy. Mm -hmm. it, um, you know that, that the relative entropy can be connected with thermodynamics in some situations. Yeah. Um, so especially when you have a heat map or, or some kind of noise, you can do this. For small coins, for very small coins, that is exactly what you are using because you are changing the Hamiltonian uh, very uh, uh, slightly. Mm -hmm. Then you can directly relate efficient information with relative entropy. It's a direct exposure. Mm -hmm. um, the fission information is connected with the spread in the variance. So we have a direct link between the, the spread in the variance and the and the and the and the relative entropy that you can connect with the thermodynamic entropy. So with the reverse mm -hmm. okay. For small points at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that 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 that, 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 is, that that is a path to do to I mean to connect to. Uh, the thermalization with the with 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 the results that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. I took note here. I will think about it, and maybe we can discuss this more. Of course. Also, yeah. also with Parisi <laughs> because he's like the guy that introduced all these things. Yeah, this is just something that came to my mind now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so again, Nadja, thank you very much. Uh, it was really, really interesting. So thank you. And thank you, Raul. Uh, Raul is saying nice paper, nice seminar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See Bye you. Take Bye. care. Ciao. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Okay, gracias.